Welcome to another Helderberg gear review and today I'm going to talk about the Leica Q2. Hi, I'm Paul Potratz, and today we're going to talk about the Leica Q2, but let me give you a little history and background. What I'm not going to talk about on this camera is pixels and all that, and I'll explain why. So you can definitely see that I am a Leica fan, that I love Leica cameras. Here's some of my personal collection. I hate to admit that, that I say some, but um, I, from a very young age, I was really drawn to Leica, and I think it's with anything that I'm drawn to. I'm drawn to stuff that's, let's say, somewhat rare, somewhat unique. Um, I will say I'm drawn to stuff that actually has a history and that's handmade. So if it's not mass produced, and I think it's just my personality, if it's not mass produced, it's not common, it's difficult to actually see and hold and purchase and touch. In other words, if you can't go to the mall and buy it, and it's even a little hard to buy it online, then I am probably interested in it. It's not to say that I go for stuff just because it's hard to find and difficult. Generally, when it's harder to find, difficult, and maybe not as common, it seems like generally the quality is much better. And with a Leica camera, I'm here to tell you, I mean, excluding the Leica 2 and maybe the Leica S and S2 and those models, that they're not as advanced as, let's say, a Sony, a Canon, or a Nikon. And what I mean by advanced, I don't think advanced is really the right word, but all of those cameras, while I have Nikons and, you know, Sonys and, and those type of cameras, they are more mass produced and they have a lot of extra fluff in them, in my opinion. When you get into a Leica, and what I really like about a Leica is not only the simplicity, but the touch and the way it feels. It's, it's really uncommon to pick up a camera for, let's say, the last 25, 35, well, probably the last 35 years that you pick up a camera and it feels solid and it's metal and the finishing and the attention to detail is perfect. I mean, all of the modern cameras, I mean, they feel mass produced, they feel plastic, they feel light. They're great cameras and they have great marketing because they're pushing all of the pixels. And I will tell you that I'm not really interested in the pixels because the pixel is a marketing thing and it's kind of like horsepower that people go out and, oh, I've got to have more horsepower. But we're all driving down the highway at the same speed. We're not, you know, we're not on the racetrack. We're not doing all that. So horsepower doesn't matter. And I'm here to tell you, and I think you can see with my, my Instagram, my website, pixels really don't matter. And I mean, one of my favorite cameras is the Leica M9. And this camera is very old. I believe it came out in 2007 and I still use it. The images are beautiful, the color, the rendition, everything is beautiful. And I've done many, of a lar many enlargements on this, you know, from this digital camera that are 30 by 40 inches and they look fabulous, but I also love film cameras. But today we're talking about the Leica Q2. Leica Q2 has been out for a couple years, and I would say this is probably the one, one of the rare occurrences that a camera came out at a price. I mean, this camera came out at about $5,000, and now today of recording this, I believe this camera is closer to $5,900. We have what's called digital rot. You buy an iPhone and it goes down in value because it has digital rot that people don't want it. But crazy enough, the Leica Q2 and the Leica Q that was prior to this camera is becoming a cult camera. And while that doesn't make me as happy because more and more people are buying it and I like stuff that's rare and unique, but I think it says a lot to Leica, the company. So Leica started in around 1849 in Germany, in Wetzlar, Germany. And they do microscopes, they do uh, binoculars, they do uh, rifle scopes. I mean, they do a, a lot of anything optics is what they do. But then in 1869, they started doing the cameras. And 
they did really well. Success really started to come, I mean, for example, like this camera, this is a Leica 3F. And this camera is from the 50s, the 60s is where the different 3 Series ran. And it was known as the doctor's camera. This is a film camera, but there's a number of people that still shoot this, including me. The optics are superior, and they're, they're just beautiful cameras to hold. But talking about the optics, there's what's called the Leica look. And you can really see a Leica look. And what the Leica look does is when you take a picture of someone, it's it blurs the background. It makes them the focal point. It almost gives them a halo effect. And Leica is pretty magical about that. The optics are superior in anything Leica. And you'll see a lot of cameras, you know, whether it's a Canon or a Sony or a Panasonic, and they will have Leica lenses on them because of the quality of the Leica lens. The Q2, though, is a great camera to just carry with you. It's small, it's compact, somewhat small and compact. And it, it just, it's got some heft to it because it is all metal. Uh, it is a digital camera. And again, I'm not going to talk about the megapixels because this will do more than anything that you ever need it to do. You could easily do an enlargement 30 by 40. And there's a lot of softwares if you feel like that you've got to actually peep on those pixels and you're starting to see some grain or whatever. You can run it through a software and make the grain even tighter. But I don't think you're going to have to do that. It's a 28 millimeter lens, so you get a really nice, you know, field of view. It's very wide. And some people are like, oh, I, I, I need a 35 millimeter lens. I need a 50 millimeter lens. I need a 90. And honestly, just quit being lazy. Either walk backwards if you need it wider than 28 millimeters or walk forwards if you need it shorter than 28 millimeters. So if you've got to really zoom in, get in, just walk. That's all there is to it. But it's a great general purpose lens that it will allow you to do anything, whether you're taking pictures of your dog, your kids. Um, it does pretty much everything you want it to do. It does, I mean, it does have enough megapixels in it. So if you can't get, like if you're shooting sports and you can't get close enough, you can actually, when you pull it into Lightroom or whatever software you're using, you can crop in on that image and it will look really great. It does great at night. It does great in the bright sun. And... What can I tell you about it other than it has, it has a, just a nice feel that the dials are metal and they have a good sound. The batteries are, last a very long time, so you can get a lot of shots out of it. There's also a lot of accessories. For example, I have the little cover that goes on it, the little leather cover, and it gives it that I guess that old nostalgic feel, it's got a little grip, but it just makes it feel sexy, romantic to me. This is the ideal camera. I do carry this pretty much everywhere I go and I've shot a lot of pictures with it. And it's just, it's, let's just say it's sexy. Probably one of the biggest benefits of the Leica Q2 that I really like is for years, I would go on a trip or I would go somewhere and I felt like, oh, I needed to carry this body and that body and this lens and that lens. And before you know it, I was carrying 40 and 50 pounds of gear. And I, I'm being serious about that much weight because I felt like, oh, I, I need a 14 to 24 millimeter lens. I need a 35 to 70. I need a 70 to 210. I need a 300 millimeter. So I would carry all these lenses. And sadly enough, I would get there and I would end up using one camera and one lens for the entire shoot. So what I like about the Leica Q2 is it forces you to be more creative because this is a fixed lens. This lens does not come off. It's a 28 millimeter lens. So it forces you to be creative. It forces you to learn your camera and it forces you to become a better photographer because you're working with a 28 millimeter lens. And I've learned from years. I mean, I've been doing photography since I was a little tiny guy and even was a professional photographer for a number of years that I never truly understood the camera and the lens and what I was going to get because I was constantly changing lenses. So I was focused more on the camera than actually focusing on the image and how I'm going to capture a better image. So again, that's what I love about the 28 millimeter lens as it forces you to worry about the image and capture a really good image. So that's a positive to it. Another positive to it 
which also makes me happy and why I drive Land Rover Defenders and classic Porsches. And, and it's not that I'm trying to show off. It's definitely not. Because with a Defender, a lot of times people don't even know what it is. And sadly, they go, oh, nice Jeep. And I go, oh, really? But with the Leica camera, I'll have people that will come up and they'll look at it and they'll go, what is that? And I'll say, it's a, it's a Leica. And they're like, oh, I've heard of that. Can I touch it? And I take it off and I hand it to them. And when I hand it to them, and I'm like, oh, be careful. And they take it in their hand and they go, ooh, this is nice. So it's the touch and the feel and the heft. And I mean, and it's, it is metal and the leather wrap. I mean, it's not leather, but it just, everything feels good. The dials feel great. Everything is solid. Nothing feels flimsy. But again, I really appreciate that when people go, oh, what is that? And I say, it's a, it's a Leica. And they're like, oh, I've heard of that. And they're like, I, I've never seen one. I've never touched one. And I'm like, yeah, you know, they're, they're really cool. So you think about if you were to buy another camera, whatever, all the major brands out there. And yes, they're a little less expensive than this, but they go down in value over time. And a Leica, which is interesting, generally most of the time, it holds its value or will go up in value. And I'll kind of give you an idea, and I know I'm kind of harping on this, but for example, this Leica M6, when I bought it new, I paid less than $1,000. And now a Leica M6, if I was to sell this on the market, this is a $4,000 camera, um, or on the low end around, you know, anywhere between three and $4,000. Leica MP, same thing. So it's just interesting that it's a, it's a camera and it holds its value or goes up, but it really is truly an heirloom product that you pass it down through the generations and people will really appreciate it. Like who would have thought you'd still be shooting a camera from 2007? And a lot of my Instagram images or Facebook images probably you know, came off of this camera here that's old technology, but beautiful images. So like a Q2, I think it has a lot going for it. So who's this camera for? It's for the individual that appreciates handmade because it is handmade. It's for the individual that wants something unique. I won't necessarily say rare, but it is somewhat rare because they, they are sometimes a little hard to come by and find, but it's for someone that appreciates very, very well constructed, very well made things. And I will tell you, you know, when you're trying to do anything in the screen, it's very easy. So if you don't want to have to actually uh, spend hours reading an owner's manual and you wanted to be able to just turn your camera on, do a couple little settings and it's ready to go, it's basically, it's a very nice, fancy point and shoot, or you can run it in manual mode. So some people could call it a doctor's camera, but I call it a camera for an individual that really appreciates quality and something that just continues to be desirable, I consider it really simple. It's a timeless camera is what it is.